<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. Hi, I'm Ryan Fabian. Welcome to Terrifying World. I'm going to talk to you today about what a bullet <laughs> does to your body. So let's say that you're in Western Central Africa and just had unprotected sex with a man who'd slaughtered a fruit bat a few days ago but isn't showing any symptoms but is infected. Here's what's going to happen to you. First, nothing happens. There's an incubation period. Ebola can hang out in your body anywhere between 2 to 21 days without showing any signs of infection. Inside your body, the virus is invading cells associated with your immune system. The virus can't reproduce on its own, so it needs cells to do that for them. So it hijacks cells, and it hijacks the machinery inside the cell, and injects the cell with its own RNA to have it reproduce more of the virus. The virus releases a glyco protein in the host cells, which help it to suppress the immune system and also help the virus to replicate. So the first thing you're going to notice is fever and chills and tiredness and soreness and all kinds of aches and pain. At this stage in the game, the virus becomes an equal opportunity infector. It'll infect all kinds of cells and it'll go to the spleen, to the lymph nodes, and through the blood, to the liver. And boy, does it deliver. Oh god, that was so bad. Now you're really not feeling well. You're having bloody diarrhea, vomiting, and jaundice. You have a painful rash on your trunk and shoulders. It bubbles up, it's nasty, it's painful, it can slough off. It's a big, painful macule rash. One of the key factors of this disease is the hemorrhaging, and it's happening now. There's a lot of tissue damage going on inside of your body, and because of this, your body can't handle it. I mean, there's all the clotting factors. All the clotting proteins are being used up, so it can't clot anymore where it needs to, and so you're just bleeding out at this point. Contrary to popular belief, there is not bleeding out of all of the orifices. This only happens in about 50% of the cases, but it is doing awful things to the inside of your body. One health worker in the 1976 outbreak, the first recognized outbreak, was doing a field autopsy on the ground, which he shouldn't have been doing, said he when he cut the guy open when he cut the body open the liver was just like a water balloon and you know the things that this thing is doing to the inside of your body are just absolutely horrifying depending on who you're talking to Ebola can kill anywhere from 50 to 90 percent of the people infected now it can kill between 6 and 16 days and while death comes relatively quick it is not a pretty way to go, as you can imagine. It is infinitely terrifying, horrifying, and painful. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Or maybe I would wish it on my worst enemy, but I wouldn't wish it on most people. Or maybe I would wish it on some people in traffic, but it's an awful way to die. I wouldn't want to go that way. Let's put it that way. There is no official cure for Ebola. There is no vaccine. There is an experimental drug called ZMAP that some of the health workers have been treated with. I don't know if it works or not. There has been little to no funding to find an Ebola vaccine because it has a relatively low casualty rate in comparison to other diseases and it does tend to hit in remote rural areas that are very far flung. There is no industrial support for, but we ignore this at our peril. The current outbreak is the product of two main things, extreme poverty and human encroachment. The deeper and deeper we go into animal habitat, the more new diseases we're going to bring out. We saw this before most recently with HIV, and we saw this before with the cholera pandemics of the 19th century that also in turn tended to hit the poor the hardest, which is happening now. They are hitting the poorest countries the hardest. This is actually a way more complicated situation than I am going into right now, but we can break it down to two main things. Like I said before, human encroachment 
and extreme poverty. And it's exciting! It's very exciting! This is a very exciting thing if you're into this kind of stuff. Because it's a story that is still unfolding. It's still unfolding, it's still happening now. And I will be here to tell you more about it in the future. Here, on Terrifying World.